and our wires crossing from signal to ground. Imagining something and building it, it excites everybody. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> In this high school robotics class, a team of students from Stockbridge, Michigan is challenged to design, test, and construct an underwater robot that will be deployed in an overseas research mission. You guys have to get to this number by March 27th. They really run our class as a business. They want to learn more about robotics. They want to learn more about business, and they want to learn more about technology. Their ultimate mission is to raise funds and deploy the robot in the Republic of Palau to help search for missing American airmen from World War II. It's pretty powerful to be able to say, we are involved in the process that hopefully will bring your dad or your uncle or your brother home. I'm trying to go up. Is it worth it to pull it up and take the weight off? Students pull up their ROV after discovering directional and buoyancy issues. Well, we had a little quick briefing, kind of relaxed a little bit. Challenges and hopeful solutions are discussed before the second deployment. We cleared up the confusion, so now we know how to fix it. A lot of kids would have just given up and went home, but not these kids. Okay, everybody just have a seat here on the bench real quick. Okay, you knew things weren't working. You tried a few things and said, hey, let's just stop and regroup. That's the safest way to do it. Field experience is so valuable. It's showing how you can accomplish a real mission and how uh, you can improve things to do even more in the future. Okay, you're in the water. Okay, so I'm going to stand right here so you guys can communicate, okay? Yeah, we're like touching the water. So they're touching it. Well, not touching it, but like two feet, three feet. I see you. You're pretty close. Just keep it in your line of sight. So go maybe just towards the water. Just be careful. You're coming towards the boat. Way towards the boat. Going under the boat. You're going again. under the boat. We're using teamwork, communication, engineering, math. We're looking at the weather and we're deciding how to proceed with our dive. We're doing all sorts of different things that we wouldn't have the opportunity to do it without the project. I see the buoy. Okay, get as close to it as possible and then try to follow the line down. You are being pushed to think like an adult. You're not being treated like a child where you're given specific tasks over and over. You're given a problem and you're asked to solve it. So there you develop more skills. You guys going down? Yeah. yeah we have the tether and so Well, we were going forward to get to the, to the line. So, yeah, it's at an angle, Chloe. So they use a lot of math, a lot of science, obviously technology, but it's much more than just robotics. I mean, how do you work with a person in a stressful environment? How do you get a team to come to a consensus and follow through with what the team decides is the best idea? Or if the team can't, somebody has to make a decision and everybody has to follow the leader um, to get the job done and complete the mission. Okay, I see bottom. He's at the bottom of the tether. Okay, so start panning to the left and right to see if there's a shipwreck nearby. <laughs> Well, it's, you're, you're looking at like the starboard or the right side of the ship. And if you keep driving forward, you're going to see that piling that's sticking out. Sweet. Okay, now we can like actually see it. We're kind of skidding across the bottom right now, so it's a little oh, cloudy. Good. Hey, Jake, can you pull up the Mac? The notes that they're keeping formulates their checklist for just about every procedure they have, whether it's engineering related or if it's business related. And technology is big business in America. STEM is big business. And they've got some really creative ideas now. They haven't lost that spark or that fire. I mean, they're gonna hopefully go to work for a business when they get out of high school or college or when they're done with their education. My name is Mike Colleen. I'm the Director of Admissions here at Alpena Community College. Community colleges are sort of two schools in one. We have liberal arts programs, but we also have those hands-on technical programs. This is one of them here. Why are you looking to go to college? Go ahead. Uh, to find a 
good career that I enjoy. Absolutely. A lot of students have taken what they've learned in the class onto college and, and into the workforce. Who's my experienced pilots in here? <laughs> okay, let me let the new pilots drive this one. Okay. Mitch Lilly graduated and he's coming to Alpena Community College to their marine technology program to learn to be an ROV technician and an ROV pilot. Um, so there's a direct relationship to a future career. This is our normal start procedure where you do an industry. Next thing you're going to do is turn on all five of those lights. And you're going to see these graphs jump up to 3,000 PSI. Now you're all set. Push this out to give yourself tether and go forward at the same time. <laughs> Before I started, I had no clue that there was this field that even existed. Okay. I wish we had these controls for the competition. <laughs> This definitely opened my eyes to, I mean, a whole different field. Can you like lower the so RV? Yeah. It's nice having a game plan and knowing exactly what I want to do. The tech here is actually pretty busy. They're looking at the vital signs of the robot, hydraulic pressures, electrical voltages, sensors, ground faults. And then in the free time from that, they're looking at the sonar, the other screens, and logging. Next year, I plan to attend the University of Michigan, pursuing a career in biomedical engineering. All these red dots are active oil wells in the Gulf of Mexico. These stretches here have all been done with robots. We were finally able to get to this oil deeper here. I feel confident in my ability to be successful. So I have big goals in my life because I know that I'm able to do it now. Now, did both of you get a chance to go to Palau? Yeah, I've been three times. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it is pretty scary to put yourself out there but I think it's definitely more rewarding than doing something that you've expected to do your whole life. The ultimate goal is to help the Bent Prop Project search for missing American airmen from World War II. But that wreck is also a natural resource. So the kids have been asked to image these wrecks each year and watch how the coral grows and to make sure it's not being damaged and to assess the health of the coral. There's so much like environmental science also that I've been learning. My AP biology class and the robotics team teamed up and we did like a man array project for the conservation offices in Palau. So we were monitoring their migration patterns. It's expanded just beyond sustaining the program to now we're helping to be a part of sustaining our environment. The Palau mission, though, is personal. It's just been a moving experience to help find an aircraft that we know that two or three of the crew members are still missing from World War II, and we're able to lead our government to that site to help recover potential remains and return them to their families. That's what drives the program. <laughs> I mean, even those young kids in third and fourth grade, they're thinking, wow, I can leave Stockbridge, leave this cornfield, travel 8,000 miles across the world and do something real while I'm still in high school.